Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Fuller Wallet Media Podcast. I'm your host today, I'm Melanie Davidson. I'm here with our special guest, Mr. Alan Calgill. Welcome. So he is specializes in all the money you need to get your real estate deals funded. Alan is known all over the nation as the guy that has cracked the code on finding private money to fund the deals. He's an author, a national speaker, and a private lending consultant. He's been featured in three newspaper articles about purchasing real estate through private lenders. He's appeared in three national infomercials, and he has published in two books titled Walking with the Wise in Real Estate and Walking with the Wise Entrepreneur, where people like Donald Trump and Chuck Norris have also been featured. Alan started his career as a real estate investor in 1995, so now he has over two decades in real estate. In 2001, he quit his job and started as a full-time real estate investor, and he's created a system to buy five to seven houses a month and has done hundreds of real estate transactions. That's very impressive. Welcome to the show today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. Well, it should be a a great one. I know you have a lot of information to to provide to our listeners today. I do. Yeah. I want to share a lot of information today. So they might want to take, take some notes. Yes, everyone, keep your uh, get your notebooks and pens or pencils ready. And so, why don't we start out? Why don't you tell us how you got started? Because this is it's real estate to me is is not really common, but it's what everyone wants to do and knows is a great invas- investment. Right. And so, but how did you get started? Well, um, I started out in corporate America. Uh, I, I got. I got a lot of years of corporate America. The last company I was with uh, was Honeywell. I was in the aerospace division and I was with them for 17 and a half years. And when you see those flashing lights go over at night, uh, that was my department. I had about 60 folks working for me. Um, I actually did acquisitions in Europe. I moved some plants. Um, I was a leader for um, five multi million dollar multi plant, multi state implementation programs. Uh, but, uh, along the way I'm paying, I'm, I was living paycheck to paycheck mm-hmm. and I thought, you know, something's not right here. Um, I, I didn't know how to change my life though. I, I didn't know, you know, private or, uh, uh, getting a property didn't even come into my, you know, vision because of what I was living through paycheck to paycheck. And so, uh, I had a couple of catalysts though, that really changed my life along the way. I, I had this old beat up car that I needed to put some money into, but uh, I put that on the back burner and I'm a little bit embarrassed to tell you that that my mother gave me the car. Um, And um, I had a first date. I took this lady out and we uh, uh, pulled up uh, at the end of the date, pulled up in front of her apartment complex. I hopped out and started to walk her up to the door and I heard something. I turned around and looked and the fireman uh, was showing up, putting my car out. Um, oh, wow. it cost in, uh, burst into flames. Yeah. What a date, huh? Hot date. When I, <laughs> when I speak all over the nation, some of you all hot date. Well, yeah. more like first and last date. Um, I, uh, you know, embarrassing was standing holding her hand, watching the fireman yeah. put, put my car out. Um, and so I, uh, I wanted to do something to change my life. I looked into franchises, but they take money. That was mm-hmm. out of the question. I did decide to invest though that year. I took my whole federal tax return and plunked it down on lottery tickets <laughs> now you know lost on every ticket uh kept me frustrated not knowing what to do with my life uh one night i i, I couldn't sleep and i got up and i started to uh, watch tv at, at uh, channel surf at two o'clock in the morning and this real estate infomercial came on and it got my attention and let me back up just a second here. Uh, what had happened here uh, 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 shortly before that was my aunt and uncle had worked all their life in, 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 uh, in having J-O-Bs. And when they quit, they were at poverty level. And so that yeah. was like with the car bursting into flames and then that happening. Uh, and then this infomercial I'm watching, I thought, you know, maybe this is the answer. And at two o'clock in the morning, I, owed, I picked up the phone and ordered that home study system. And I became enthralled with real estate. And that year I bought my first two properties, the next year five, the following year 18. Uh, And since that point in time, like you said, I've done hundreds of real estate transactions along the way. And oddly enough, I've been in three nationwide 
uh, infomercials. So here I, I got started with an infomercial and, and now I'm out on these infomercials all over the, the U.S. So uh, quite a life changer, you know, at that point in time. Yeah, that that something like that, that's when something personal happens to you, that is such an eye opening, especially when you see family going through it as well. Right. It's even more so. Yeah. Yeah. And so how yeah. many years? So you've been in the business over 20 years. Yeah, 28 years. I uh, got my first property uh, July 7th, 1995. And um, what had happened was I had I had uh, saw in the newspaper that they had a uh, someone talking about real estate. Well, I was really had a passion for real estate at that point in time, even though I had never bought a property at that juncture. And so I went to this meeting and it was a, a meeting that that uh, a RIA group had, a real estate investment group had mm-hmm. in, in my town. And I didn't even know they existed. And so I went to this meeting and I, uh, I bought a home study system there. So my second home study system. And one of the folks uh, that were one of the board members of the RIA uh, kind of took me under his wing and helped me through my first property. And so uh, I, I remember walking out the door and my knees were knocking and I was really excited about just having to buy a house. And uh, his thoughts were on the next property, how we were going to go buy the next mm-hmm. property. And I uh, wasn't too long after that, that that's, well, that's exactly what I did. Once I had one underneath my belt, I was looking for the next one. So that is, uh, you know, that's 20, 20 years ago is when that all started. So we're going to talk about uh private lending. So why don't you tell our listeners, what is the difference between private lend, a private lender and a hard money lender? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, let me, let me stop back on, on the hard money lender. Um, they're structured to where they take, manage the rules. You know, they set the rules just like a bank sets the rules. And what I, I saw over the last four or five years or so is a hard money lender uh, would would set up boosts like at uh, RIA events, and uh, but they wouldn't have the word hard money on their on their sign. They would call themselves private lenders, and I right. really felt like that's a, a misnomer, and I want to caution people about that because um, it, it's distinctly difference between a hard money lender and a private lender, which is what you're asking me, and so. With a hard money lender, they set the rules just like a bank sets the rules. The difference of it is, is they call them hard money lenders because uh, it's painful on financially yeah. because they they charge a lot and they have a lot of rules that are ugly. Um, in fact, I encourage my students to be hard money lenders to, to have another stream of income. So, um, but but then with a private lender, it's just the opposite. You get to set all the rules. Mm-hmm. Private lender is is just a a person that uh, uh, wants to get a high rate of return on their money, and maybe they've got money on a bank certificate of deposit and getting a poultry low rate of return, and uh, and then we come along and we offer a higher rate, and the uh, person decides to loan you money. Well, when they decide to loan us money, they have no idea typically, unless they're a real estate investor, they have no idea what what is expected. In fact, I had a lady walk into my office one day and hand me a $110,000 check, you know, to go fund my property. And so, yeah, and and you don't want to do that because then the money is not secured. And so I didn't take the check. I wanted her to take it. And when I I got a deal coming up, I would call her up and she could take that money and send it into escrow so I could, I could cover it. So, um, so that's, that's basically the the key on private money. Uh, What I do is, is I, I, I uh, tracked, uh, convert, and manage private l- money lenders. That's what mm-hmm. I teach my students. And I also teach them to do it safely. And on that safely part, and this is what a lot of people out there that are interested about getting into private money, or maybe they've already got a private money lender, they don't know that there are some rules out there that, that they have to follow. And so what uh, sets me apart from... Uh, all the other speakers out there that's teaching private money is the fact that I hired an SEC attorney to research every state. Uh, I started out with mine. In fact, I had heard that uh, uh, before I'd, I'd hired him that uh, it was the Wild West. We could do whatever we want. Well, um, I I thought I'd better check it out. And so I 
uh, since I was starting to use private money. And so I uh, hired this attorney. He re researched my state and he says, yeah, there's some rules. They aren't tough, but there are some rules. And then I had him do the whole United States and then Canada. And so coming out of that, he uh, he called me up and he said, hey, I want to thank you. And I said, why is that? He said, well, I moved into my new house and you just bought it, paid for it. <laughs> so, you know, it gives, gives an indication, I think, to my students of the moral obligation, the dedication I got to them to make sure that we got the facts. Now, a lot of my students have no need to use the SEC. I should bring that up. So you don't always have to use the SEC. Uh, you just have to use it in certain situations, like if you're doing big commercial deals and other stuff. So, um, and so that's what I teach my teach my folks. And so you go through, uh, that's impressive that you did that because um, just as you said, yeah, there's a lot that don't and knowing the rules or at least knowing what to watch out for is a good thing. Yeah, it's critical. It's critical. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, and I was, I was given bad information uh, early on, like I said, from this other, other speaker, he just came off stage, yeah. and, you know, and I told him that and or he told me, you know, it's a wild west. And I thought I just better, you know, make sure that that was true. And I come to find out it was, it was not true. So, you know, that we, there is rules. And so we just need to follow them. They're, they aren't hard. Yeah. What happens is people just don't know what they are. And so what the blessing for me is by hiring that attorney, I can share this with my students and they can make the decision on what they want to do. Yeah. Well, and for all of our listeners, you can go to floorwalletmedia.com forward slash Alan Cowgill to get uh, to get to his website where he has a giveaway and you can get information on his course as well. Cool. So what kind of, uh, so can you use uh, private lenders for any sort of deals or does it, is it restricted or? Well, First off, the, the first first part of this will will not surprise you, but the second part I'm going to talk about oil. Uh, you can use private money on commercial deals and residential, and about 35% uh, of my student base is doing commercial stuff. So, and I've had a little some a little uh, commercial stuff, but but what might surprise you is you can use private money for your own own personal residence. Uh, you can buy notes. For, I know people out there want to want to make money with uh, with buying notes. Um, this might shock you. When I'm in California, uh, I will have movie producers uh, buying my system because uh, they want to have people invest with private money into the movies. Um, wow, can, I did not know that. I know, isn't that something? Yeah. Uh, uh, you can become a hard money lender, like I said. Uh, this next one will shock you, I think. Credit card <laughs> companies, people sometimes don't pay the, the credit card and therefore, uh, the credit card companies will take that money and bundle it up on on uh, non-payment on on these credit cards. And let's say they bundle it up and have a million dollars. Well, they will sell that for pennies on the dollars. And I've had my students use private money to go buy that debt and then go after the people to to pay. So uh, I, I, there's a uh, there's a group prior to COVID in Columbus, Ohio, I'm in Springfield. And uh, what they were working on was to uh, create a big concert with private money. So, oh. yeah, so yeah. I think they might still do that, but but uh, fell apart back then. So they had big names on that. So when you're looking at private money, there's, there's a lot of different ways to do that. Now, what I like to do, what I like to do with real estate is have the money secured by real estate. Okay, which okay. protects not only me, but my, my lender. And so, and some of the things here I, I brought up, like the concert, like uh, producing movies, like uh, buying credit card debt, you know, those things there uh, are not secured. And so that puts the lender in jeopardy. And that's stuff that I don't pre prefer to do, but I know other people do. So, and their money's just as secure as anything else. Yeah, that's the way I want to do it. I want my folks to be secure. And so do when, when most people get their principal back, do they reinvest again? Yeah, what it, it'll surprise you is private lenders loan you money based on the fact that they trust you. Right. And so what I have found is that they will, uh, they'll actually beg you to take their money back once they get in it. What, you know, when they're, when they're starting out, there's a little, uh, you know. Hesitancy at first, yeah. Yeah, yeah about, about. You know, is this a real thing and all that? Well, once they go through and see that you come through and they get a a, a nice check, whether you're paying monthly or whether you're, you're paying at the at the end, um, 
you know, then they get excited and then they don't, they don't want you to, to quit loaning them money. <laughs> you, know, when, you know, they want to keep loaning money to you. So, um, so it's, it's important. And uh, yeah. And it's rare that they leave you. It's very rare that they leave you. Uh, the only reason that they will leave you is because they've had a life change. Right. Um, that would be like a divorce or the kids right. going, to, going to college. I've had that happen before too. Um, and so at that point in time, they need to get the, the money back. And so, but it's really simple when that happens. Uh, I have some of my students before they really get into this, understand how easy it is because all you have to do is call up another person and they're t- tickled to jump in. And so you can, you can get these transactions done within, within three days or a week. So somebody wants their money back, you pick up the phone, you call the next lender and boom, they got, you get the money back and in play. So and within so, three to five days, you can get it rolling. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So yeah. The other, you- thing, the other thing too, is I should mention that what I like to do is, well, let me start at the beginning. When I buy a property, there's four parts of a, of a deal at closing. You know, you got to, you got to fund the property with private money. You, you got to, there'll, there'll be closing costs you got to cover. There's rehab costs typically to enhance the value of the property. And the fourth item, which is really unique, is I will put money in my pocket the day I buy a property. Normally, okay. what we look at is getting money at the at the end when you sell the property or in right. payments over time. Well, I get money there, but I also pull out a little bit of money. I don't suck everything out of this, but I also pull out a little bit of money. And the same thing will happen on what you and I are talking about. When I have a lender that has to get the money back to send the kids to college or whatever it is, and I bring in the next lender, I not only include a little bit for closing costs, but also include a little bit for me. Right. So it's a win, win, win for me. Yeah, that makes sense. And the private lenders win too. And so how do you find the private lenders? Well, I I started out with my mom and I was coming up through my real estate education. I heard this thing about hard money lenders and private lenders. I thought they were the same thing. Probably half the people listening right now are thinking, oh, it's just, you know, those the same. And they're distinctly different. Like I said before, hard money lender sets of rules like a bank and the rules there are ugly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I consider even the bank ugly too, but um, anymore, but with private money, we just ask people to loan us money. And I, I encourage my students to work with people that, that they, uh, that they know. Right. You know, some people are out there in the NFL club, no friends left. So we have to, have a, <laughs> we, have to we have to work different with them. Um, but uh, what happened was, as I'm coming up through my education, I, I found out that there, there are distinctly difference between hard money lenders and private lenders. I went back to mom and I said, look, you're getting this poultry low rate of return on a bank CD. Mm-hmm. She had committed some money when my dad passed away. And so, um, and she would, was so proud of herself because she would put money on a, on a bank CD. She would drive 45 minutes one way just to get a few pennies more on a bank CD. And so yeah. I, I figured this out and I come back to mom, sit down at the kitchen table. And I said, look, you're getting this low rate of return. I'll, I'll give you a mortgage, a promissory note, hazard insurance, lender title insurance, and a disclosure. And uh, I'll pay you a high rate of return and I'll pay you simple interest only just like the bank was paying you and mom jumped for joy and she started loaning me uh, money. And then I, I found a second person. I, I went to his house and sat at his kitchen table and I'm a little embarrassed to tell you that I couldn't answer all of these questions. But by mm-hmm. the time I got done, he had agreed to loan me money. So I had my second private lender. Now along the way, uh, his son had loaned me money and his wife had loaned me money. So what I learned and one of the things I want to share with people is one private lender will bring you two. Two can bring you yeah. four. And what will happen when you do that is you could get so much money, you can't spend it all. In fact, that's what happened to me one time. I had so much money, I couldn't spend it all. That would be a good a good problem to have. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. I bought, bought a lot of houses. I hired a guy actually to go buy houses. I taught him real quick how, I, how to buy a property. Um, and uh, he wasn't a real estate investor. He He just had two personal residents before. And so from mid-September, when I hired him to Christmas, he bought me 21 properties, spending my private money. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then from New Year's to August, he bought another 48. That's 69 properties in less than a year. And that's how much private money I had flowing in. 
So do you give everyone the same interest, amount of interest? Or? That's, a, that's a good question. Um, it, it depends. It depends. Um, if you're doing a group meeting, like what happened to me was uh, when I quit my job, the bank quit me. I didn't think they would, but they yeah. did. Okay. Yeah. I'd been with them for years. And so um, I, I had to do something quick because I had a negative $10,000 cash flow problem starting at that point in time when I quit my job. And so I had, a, I called this group meeting and I had 18 folks show up and uh, told them about what I did. And then uh, the next month I had, had about I don't know, 12 folks show up and uh, a couple months later, I added up and had a million dollars to go buy property. So that got me launched. Well, when I started out, like with my mom, the way she liked to have money was the way a bank CD does. So the bank CD takes money in, they give you an interest rate. Mom liked it because she got monthly payments. Right. And, and then, uh, you know, and then eventually that, that matures. So, so she liked that, but they also have some downsides with the bank because they, they give you a, a six month penalty if you take the money out, things like that. Mm -hmm. So I don't do that. Okay. They want their money back. I just give them their money back. So in mom's case, I would pay her simple interest only. And that's the way I started out with, with everybody. And, and the bulk of my private lenders were people with bank CDs. Along the way, I learned more about IRAs. And so I started to encourage people to, with IRAs to loan me money too. And then what happens is I found out about 401ks. And if you know somebody that has quit, retired, or gotten laid off, and they've got a 401k, they got this dormant 401k, they can roll that money over into the self-directed IRAs. And so I started to have three different ways to do money. One is amortize, you know, that'd be the lowest interest rate and paying down over time. Mm -hmm. Number two is like my mom, simple interest only, which means if she loans me a hundred thousand, and I pay monthly. What I'm doing is I'm paying on the interest every month, keep up with the interest rate. And so at the end of when I sell this property, mom would still get her hundred thousand dollars back, which is unlike amortization, which goes down. Okay. Um, and then the third way, which was just incredible when I figured this one out is, is people with 401ks, don't get monthly payments like my mom did on the bank CD. Mm -hmm. And so I realized when I got thinking about this, if somebody has a 401k rolls it over into a self-directed IRA, cause they got to get it out of the 401k. Right. And so they've gone all these years and not had to have payments on, on this money. So why didn't I continue with that? And so what I started to do, and this is great for people that buy, fix and sell is, mm -hmm. is I, uh, I borrow money from somebody that has had a 401k rolled into a self-directed IRA and do no monthly payments and give them a nice rate of return. And that money's, you know, going up over time, but it is such a blessing to people that are doing deals like rehabs by fixed sell. Um, that way they don't have to come pick money out of their pocket every single month to, to cover right. the expenses. And so, um, and so what happens then is it's just, it's a beautiful thing. It's a double-edged sword though. And this is what I, I tell my students is if you do this and you get out there 18 months and you still haven't got this property handled, then you need to be thinking about how to have this thing pay down. And even if you go to the bank where they can take the money back down and amortize it, then you need to do that so that you can, you can handle this deal. Uh, but what most folks do is they buy, fix, sell, buy, fix, sell, and then they don't have to have monthly payments using the way that I teach them. So what do you think of that one? That's a great system. It really is. Isn't it? Yeah. So I, I, I pay three different ways. Amortize, like my mom did with simple interest, and then they get paid when I get paid, which is when I sell the property. Yeah. It, and it works for your different types of lenders. That's the, that's the best part. And it, yeah. Yeah. It fits. And so do you use only one lender for each property or how does that work? That's, that's a preferred way, but that's not okay. typically the way it happens. Um, you know, sometimes you'll, you'll need more money on the deal. And so the, the, the bigger chunk of money gets the first position, the smaller chunk of money gets a second position. Um, every now and then I try to tell a joke where I say the person in the 73rd position is not in good shape, but, um, 
at least I got a laugh out of you. Um, but now uh, I know why you don't do comedy. No. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm the same True. way. <laughs> True. So yeah. So that's uh, you know that. But but you know what a blessing. I mean to uh, to bring in people and have uh, mm -hmm. have them all benefit from what you're doing, and you just stack the mortgages up if need be. Yeah, it would. And it's just, um, I think I read that on your uh, on your website is that it's a win win for everyone. And that's what that's the best part. That is. Yep. And everyone benefits. Yep. And so, well, looking back, would you have done anything differently? Yeah, um, I, I do two things. Um, obviously, it, it, it took me a couple of years to get my first private lender. And then I'm embarrassed to say that when I started you know, in 1995, um, I didn't really get aggressive until I quit my job yeah. in 2001. So I had a period of time there where uh, I was buying some property with through banks. Uh, and I started out with, you know, my mom as a private lender and then a couple more. But I, I didn't really get cranked up until um, I, I quit my job and the bank quit me. And so when that happened, um, you know, I, I really got going on. So there's a, there's a period of times there about five years, you know, where I didn't, didn't really get into it. So uh, I would out, obviously do private lenders quicker and more of them because there's uh, it's just a wonderful way to do real, real estate. The other thing too, is um, I was very patient about getting uh, training and, mm -hmm. um, and I, I wish I would have done more of it early on. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I started out with uh, with being a part of the Rio group and learning learning stuff from the other uh, investors, which was good. And then I uh, bought into a uh, a boot camp, mm -hmm. and and, um, and that was great. But I took the same boot camp for for one year. I could go back as many times as I wanted, and I went went to it every time they had that boot camp, three times or whatever it was over the year. And what happens? What I learned in real estate is that. Um, there's different pieces of, of this business. Okay. How to buy, how to fix, you know, things like that. Um, and so what I realized is I should have gotten more training in that period of time, which would have allowed me to grow quicker. So uh -huh. uh, the bottom line uh, in this business is, is education. And that's what I got from that first home study system off of TV. And now years later, I, I personally have created 75 products for real estate investors. That's awesome. And so for our listeners, you can go to fullerwalletmedia.com forward slash Alan Calgill to get the information that you're looking for. There you and go. So is there anything you'd like to, anything that we didn't cover today that you'd like to leave our listeners with? I think that's pretty, pretty much it. it um, you know, you gave some great information. Well, it's important. You know, I want people yeah. to know that, you know, when you're looking at private money, you, you need to know how to attract private money lenders. You need to know how to convert them into loaning you money uh, and how to manage them uh, and um, then how to do so safely. And so uh, that's the key path on, on attracting and converting and managing private money lenders and doing it so safely out there so everybody can, can be tremendous real estate investors. Which we all want to be. You got it. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. We really appreciate it. Love talking with you. And you have a wonderful day. We'll have to do it again soon. Yep. Thanks. And thanks, everybody. Enjoy. Thank you. Take care. That's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the show. May these nuggets of wisdom help you down the path to success and make you a formidable leader in your chosen niche or industry. Don't forget to subscribe to the show at fullerwalletmedia.com so you can always be updated with our latest release. Be sure to share with your fellow entrepreneurs who also want to unlock their fullest potential and win big in today's market. Thank you for listening. See you on the next episode.